Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So it is the end of November, so I thought I would sit down and share my November favorites and fails and let you know which makeup products I loved, which ones didn't work for me. I did test out some new makeup this month and then I also rediscovered some older favorites. I feel like my makeup just, it ranged from either wearing no makeup to doing like quick five minute makeup to doing a full face. I didn't do a full face super often because November was the first full month that we actually had a baby and I feel like the second month was harder than the first month so I did tend to keep my makeup a little bit more minimal and my favorites will reflect that so if you are on or if you're looking for like some good quick and easy products I've definitely got you covered in today's video but I'm excited to just sit down and chat about makeup with you guys I hope you're doing well and I hope that November was amazing for you as we head into December I hope it is even better and let's just jump into it I'll kick it off with a couple of eyeshadow palettes I want to start with two different color pop palettes one older one newer to be honest with you guys I'm so sad to say it but I feel like I've lost a little bit of interest in color pop they used to be my favorite brand ever and they are still one of my favorite Favorites because they make some really great products that are just staples for me but I feel like they just release so much now more than ever every time I turn around there's a new ColourPop collection and I am on their PR list so I do get sent some of their new collections not everything but I feel like I'm getting a new ColourPop package like every three days and I just don't get the chance to try everything out anymore I donate a lot of it I save some products for giveaways but there is one new release that definitely caught my eye that I'm glad I tried because it's definitely become a favorite of mine. This is the ColourPop Of Quartz palette. So typically during the winter time, I love cooler toned eyeshadow and this palette is so perfect for both quick and easy everyday looks, but also something a little bit more intense and smoky. If you like cooler toned eyeshadows like me, I think you'll really enjoy this one. I like that you get such a mix of shades. Even though it's only a nine pan, you're able to create quite a few different looks. So you get some cooler toned taupey browns that almost have like a little bit of a pink hint to them. So you can go that way or you can switch it up and go with the smokier tones. There's like a gray, a silver, a deep navy, and then a charcoal like smoky shade as well. So you can definitely do something really dramatic in that direction. I actually wore this in two videos during the month of November. I'll put clips on the screen for you guys so you can see the two different looks that I got with it. One is like a very easy, quick five minute eyeshadow look. And then the other one was a little bit more of a smoky look that I might wear to like a holiday party if I was going to one. So I really enjoy this one. It definitely caught my eye. I tend to love their neutral palettes overall just because their formula is very reliable. So when I don't know what to do with my eyeshadow, I'll reach for one of their neutral palettes and I feel like I get a very seamless look every time. So this is definitely one of the newer palettes that caught my eye. I'm filming this video on Monday. It's going up on Tuesday. They've been having a really big sale over the weekend. I don't know if it's going to extend throughout the week. It's kind of like their Cyber Week deal. But if so, definitely check this out. If there's not a sale going on, you can use my coupon code Andrea to save 10% on your order. But if there is a sale, typically it's going to be a little bit better than that 10%. So don't use the code if there's a sale going on. But if not, and you want to place an order, you can use that code just to save a little bit. Along with that palette, there is an older ColourPop palette that I've been reaching for nonstop this month and even last month in October. This is the ColourPop Nude Mood palette. I've loved this palette for years. I just repurchased it a few months ago because a couple a couple of my shadows had broken and then it was getting a little bit older so I felt like it wasn't performing as well as it used to. So I did buy it again and I've already made like a significant dent on a couple of the shadows and I've just had this one for like maybe two months. But I use it so, so much. This really is just like my perfect warm neutral eyeshadow palette. For me, it has really soft light shades so I can do something a little bit more natural or I can go a little bit more smoky. And they definitely have smokier palettes on their website as well. But for me, this is just like a good go-to everyday palette. Typically, I'll just take the shadows on like the top row and then this one as well for like an easy five minute look. Today, I do have this gold all over the lid and then this deeper brown in the outer corner. But it's an older favorite that I just keep pulling out and keep using over and over again because it really is such a staple for me. I also just wanted to mention these two ColourPop Super Shock shadows because when I'm in a hurry and I still want to wear eyeshadow because I do love eyeshadow, I'll typically just blend a bronzer into the crease and then take one of these shadows and place it all over the lid. Lately, I've been using the shade Peekaboo, which is just a very soft kind of like light icy shade. So it adds like a hint of sparkle to the eyes without being too intense or too over the top. But I also love Amaze when I want something a little bit more shimmery. This kind of has a deeper 
well, compared to Peekaboo, it's not super deep, but compared to Peekaboo, it's a little bit deeper and it has a little bit more of like a golden undertone. So I'll swatch those next to each other just so you can see what they look like. I feel like when a lot of people are in a hurry, they tend to skip eyeshadow, but my eyelids just tend to be a little bit more red. So for me, I love to throw something quick on the eyes most days. Sometimes I'll skip it, but for me, if I'm in a big hurry, I'll just skip like eyeshadow primer and just throw on a super shock shadow and I'm good to go. But these have really been like my go-to eye products lately. So that brings me to my first fail of the month. I love the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. That one is so good when I want really intense, thick, voluminous, dramatic lashes. When I don't want to wear false lashes, but I still want the drama, the It Cosmetics Superhero is my go-to. I've loved it for years. So when I saw they released a new mascara, and I talked about this in a Purchase or Pass video, I was kind of curious to try it out. I actually got this in the mail as PR, and I decided to give it a shot. I think I used it in a video where I was testing new makeup, but I've tried it a few times since then, and it really, it just doesn't compare to the Superhero Mascara. This is the Hello Lashes Mascara by It Cosmetics. So when I initially apply this, it looks pretty good. It does a good job at separating my lashes. It makes them look long. It definitely doesn't give them the volume that the It Cosmetics Superhero does. That is my main concern with it, or my main issue with it. If you're looking for length, then you might enjoy this one. But as you layer it up, you kind of start to lose that separation. And it's almost like the lashes stick together. And it's weird, they almost look a little bit tangled. I wouldn't even say they look clumpy, they almost just kind of start to tangle together, which is so weird. I've never had that experience with the mascara before. I actually went online and read the description right before filming this video, and I did not realize this, but it's actually a tubing mascara. And if you guys have watched my videos, you might know I just don't have a lot of luck with tubing mascaras. I didn't realize this was a tubing mascara, so I have to say, for a tubing mascara, I almost like it a little bit better than other tubing formulas I've tried. When I've tried other tubing mascaras in the past, they haven't really done anything for my lashes. But after a few coats, this one looks pretty good. It separates my lashes, makes them look long. They just don't look super thick or voluminous. So if you're looking for more of a natural mascara that does separate and lengthen and you like tubing formulas, I think you'll enjoy this. The whole thing with tubing mascaras is that they stay in place well, but they remove very easily because they just kind of slide off with water. I have it on today, but I did go in with a little bit of the Essence Lash Princess Curl and Volume just to give my lashes like an extra boost because I felt like they weren't really looking the greatest. So for me, this was a fail just because when it comes down to it, I'd rather just go with the It Cosmetics Superhero. But I don't think it's the worst tubing mascara on the market. So if you like tubing mascaras, it could be worth trying. During the Sephora VIB sale, I picked up the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm Heat and I got the shade Hot Chocolate Heat. So I do have the original one in Cherry, which is like a brighter red, and I love that one. It really was my go-to during the summertime, but I'm so glad that I picked up Hot Chocolate because the Fenty Gloss Balm in the original formula in the shade Hot Chocolate is my number one lip gloss of all time, and the Gloss Balm Heat is so good. It does have a little bit of a plumping quality to it, so as you apply it, your lips look really smooth, really glossy, but it's not as intense as other plumping glosses, so it's not painful. You just feel like a slight tingling, but what I love about this one is it's just like this beautiful sheer chocolatey color that looks so good on the lips whether you're wearing it on its own or over lip liner. So this really has been my number one lip product this month. I've pretty much worn it anytime I wear makeup. It is more of a sheer color, so I will wear it on its own, but today I have it paired with a lip liner. I've been using it with these lip liners as well. These are from LA Girl. They are the Shockwave Nude Lip Liners. So my number one is Sandstorm. That's what I'm wearing today. I did apply a good amount of this just to create more of a pigmented base underneath the gloss, but I also really love this one. This one is Coquette. This formula is very smooth, really creamy, but it does lock your lipstick into place well. What I like about these colors is they're just a little bit darker than my natural lip colors, so I do feel like it looks a little bit more natural compared to other lip liners I might reach for. I might use a light hand and apply a little bit of this gloss for more of a natural look, or use a heavy hand and apply a little bit more of this gloss for more of a dramatic look like I have on today. So it's kind of nice that you can wear these products in different ways and not have to purchase a bunch of different options. The LA Girl lip liners are super affordable and the gloss bombs come with a lot of products. So these will last a while, which is really nice. And it's good because I've been using them so much, but there's no way I'll go through them anytime soon. They're just very easy, really effortless. And I think the colors are nice for the winter. I did pick up a couple of different holiday gifts sets. I have a couple of gift guides coming your way. I'm doing like a lifestyle one, 
um, an actual beauty gift set one. I have a few other in mind, but I did pick up this Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm set and I love it. I've loved these pillow balms ever since Too Faced first released them. The original one is my favorite and this set does come with the original, but it also comes with three other options. So they're all minis, which is kind of nice because if you're anything like me, it's hard to finish up lip products. So you do get four minis. Like I said, you get the original, which is just like a clear lip balm. And then you also get Watermelon Kiss, which smells like watermelon. It's a very sheer light pink, but you also get two that have shimmer in them, which I thought was kind of fun because the original pillow balms don't have any shimmer in them. So if you guys haven't tried the pillow balms, they're so good. They feel very luxurious. I feel like pillow balm is the perfect description because they make your lips feel very plush, very pillowy. And I just thought this set was fun. I'm really into mini lip products. I like to have them just kind of all around the house because I'll wear them throughout the day. They do provide long lasting moisture. They're very, they're so hard to explain because they don't feel like a gloss. They don't feel like a typical lip balm. They kind of have like this I don't know, like this plush texture to them. They're really, really nice. And this really has been like my go-to lip treatment. So I loved this little set. If you're looking for a good gift for someone or if you've been wanting to try them out, this is a nice option because you do get a couple of different shades. As far as the complexion goes, I've really been into powder foundation this month. I'm planning on doing like a five minute makeup look using powder foundation because in the past, sometimes I would use powder foundation but a lot of the time when I would use it, I would use it over liquid foundation just to kind of set everything in place and give me a little bit more coverage. These days I've been using powder foundation on its own. So my favorite is the Urban Decay Stay Naked The Fix. Right now I have the shade 30YW, which is just a little bit too yellow toned for me. So I actually picked up 30NN during the Sephora VIB sale but this looks pretty yellow too. I'll show you guys what these look like next to each other. They're not super different. I'm surprised that 30NN, which is supposed to be a little bit more neutral, is still so yellow toned. And I feel like I've heard that about the entire Stay Naked line that a lot of people say the foundations, concealers run very yellow. So I will try it out. I do like a little bit more of a yellow complexion product because my neck is pretty yellow toned. I do have some yellow undertones, but I don't know. I thought maybe a neutral color would be a little bit better because it does pull very yellow, the shade 30YW. Anyway, that being said, I love using this for just like a quick and easy makeup look. I'll just take the sponge that it comes with and apply it directly to my skin with the sponge. What's so nice about powder foundations and oily skin is that it will just keep your skin matte longer than a liquid foundation. With liquid foundation, I always have to go in and set it with a powder every single time. Otherwise, it will move around, start to, you know, kind of come off, melt away. That's just not the case with powder foundation. My skin will still sometimes get a little bit oily, but I feel like when I use this, it's so quick and easy. I get a little bit of coverage. It hides the redness. It keeps my skin matte. So it is so nice when I want to take the time to do my makeup, but I really don't have a lot of time at all. So I will definitely use this in an upcoming video and show you guys how it works. I've tried a couple of powder foundations throughout the year. I also have the Fenty one in my makeup collection right now, but I like the Urban Decay one better because I find it to be a little bit more mattifying and I think it has a little bit more coverage. And if I'm going to wear foundation, I do want it to kind of cover redness or breakouts and just make my skin look a little bit more even. So I can't get enough of it enough of this. It really has been my go-to this month. Usually before I go in with the powder foundation, I will still apply a primer. Sometimes I won't. If I'm in a really big hurry, I'll just, you know, moisturize my skin, apply SPF, and then use that. But if I have like an extra few seconds, I've been using the ColourPop Dew Primer. Mine's, I mean, it's getting there. I'm not quite done with it. I have, you know, this much left but this is so good with liquid foundation and with powder foundation. Initially, I thought the texture might not go well with powder foundation because it does have a little bit of like a tacky feel to it, but it actually works really nicely alongside a powder foundation. The actual powder applies well on top. It doesn't look streaky or uneven on top of this primer, and this primer works well to lock that powder foundation in even longer. So really, you know, I don't take the time to touch up my makeup throughout the day very often unless I'm going somewhere later on but usually I'll apply this and then apply this and I'm good to go all day long. So again I do want to film a video showing you my powder foundation routine because I don't think I've ever done one of those on my channel. I've just never really been like the biggest powder foundation fan 
but these days it is my favorite because it's so quick and easy. There are two blushes that I want to share with you guys in today's video. One is a favorite, one is a fail. Let me start with my favorite. This is technically a highlighter. It is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in the shade Happy Thoughts. So it is very, very shimmery, very glowy. You can totally use this as a highlighter, but if you love glowy blushes, almost like blush highlighter hybrids, this is such a pretty color. It is incredibly subtle. So there are days where I will wear it on its own when I just don't want to have a lot of color on my face. Sometimes if I'm doing my makeup very quickly and I apply blush, I feel like that is like the main focal point of my makeup. And I'm just not like a big blush person. So I like this one because it gives my skin just like a hint of color, but it also adds a good shine. So I feel like I get blush and highlighter all in one. I have to be careful not to go overboard and apply this on like my entire cheek. Otherwise it looks like my whole cheek is glowing. I'll just kind of apply it to like the high points of my cheek. So it gives me a little bit of a glow, just like a subtle hint of color. But I also like using this on top of other blushes, but I can't get enough of it. I think that it looks so pretty on the skin. I just go in with like a, um, I'm trying to think of the brush that I use. So I'll use like an angled contour brush, like something that I would use for, or with a cream bronzer. I'll just use with this and it works really, really well. I have one from ColourPop and there's another one from Profusion that I like. I will link them in the description box below in case you guys are wondering, but you can also just use your fingers. The blush fail is this one from Huda Beauty. I picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale. I really thought that I was going to love this. In fact, I almost purchased another shade like right after ordering this because I just thought it was going to be my go-to formula. I don't hate it enough to return it or declutter it quite yet. I'm going to try to use it a little bit more and see if I can really get it to work for me. And I have found a way to make it work for me, but I still consider it a fail, especially for the price point, because this is marketed as like a glowy blush. And I just, I don't understand because on my skin tone, it's not glowy at all. It's a very, very subtle blush. You can build it up to some extent, but overall it looks very subtle on the cheeks. So I would say, you know, maybe go with a deeper shade than you would typically go with if you do want it to show up really well because it doesn't seem to be super intense on the cheeks, which for me, I do like more of a subtle blush, but it doesn't have that glow that I was looking for. So the way that I've been using it is by applying this and then using the ColourPop product on top. So I'm able to make it work for me because it just gives me like a very subtle flush of color. And then to get that glow, I'll use the ColourPop Super Shock on top. But on its own, it's not glowy. I feel like the Milani Baked Blushes are a better version of this. I haven't actually read the other reviews on this to see what other people are saying, but I'm just kind of surprised by it because based on the marketing, I just thought it was going to be a little bit more glowy. And on me, it just looks like a very subtle wash of color. It looks like you know, a three or $4 blush rather than a however much this was, like $20, $22 blush. The last thing I wanted to mention in today's video is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. So I also picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale. And I think that this is just such a nice multitasking product. It's a little bit more expensive. I was able to get it for a discounted price which was really nice. It comes with five eyeshadows, a blush, and then also a highlighter. The eyeshadows are really nice. The matte shadows definitely blend out well. The metallics are different than her normal metallic formula or what we typically see in her eyeshadow palettes. They almost have like a little bit of a flaky texture to them, but they look really intense and pretty on the eyes. So for me, I do love the five eyeshadows in this palette. The highlighter is definitely more of an intense highlighter. If you like a really you know, intense glow, then I think you'll enjoy it. I don't use it quite as much as I thought I would because these days I've been going for something a little bit more subtle, but I will use it on the eyes or the inner corner, so I am getting use out of it for sure. And then the blush itself is also a little bit more subtle. It's a cream blush, but it's not overly creamy, so I really like it. Typically I'll wear it when I'm going for more of a light makeup day and I don't wanna take the time to apply powder blush. I'll just use my fingers and like dab it on my cheeks or use a stippling, br stippling brush <laughs> I haven't had a lot of coffee today, so my brain isn't catching up to what I'm trying to say, but I'll usually use a stippling brush and just kind of apply it to my cheeks very, very lightly. So for me, this is a really nice, just like daily staple. If you have your go-to daily staples in your life, 
as far as eyeshadow and blush and highlighter, you might not need this, to be completely honest. It is a little bit more of an expensive palette. It's Natasha Denona. But as we, you know, look to traveling next year, I will definitely be bringing this with me just because it has everything in one place. And I love just like the easy go-to neutral colors. So I've been getting a lot of use out of it. I definitely think it was worth the money for me. And if you've been thinking about trying it, I think you'll get a lot of use out of it if you tend to wear neutrals and you like all-in-one face palettes. And these days, I've really been drawn to just like quick products. So multitasking palettes have been my favorite, which is funny because I used to not hate them, but I really didn't like them in the past. I always just think it's funny how your makeup preferences change, even like your product preferences. And mine have changed so much in the past year. I never thought I'd really be into face palettes or powder foundation, but here we are. Okay, guys, that is everything I wanted to share with you in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you guys are doing well and that you're having a good week so far. Let me know in the comment section below which products you guys love this month. If you discovered any new favorites, I would love to know, or if you've just been using what you have, let me know too. I'm planning on doing an updated everyday makeup drawer very soon, so stay tuned for that. But I'll actually be back on Thursday with a new video. Bye.